Claude Frederic Bastiat French Claude Fédic Bastia the 29th of June 1801 to the 24th of December 1850 was a French economist and writer who was a prominent member of the French liberal school Bastiat developed the economic concept of opportunity cost and introduced the parable of the broken window he was also a Freemason and member of the French National Assembly. As an advocate of classical economics and the economics of Adam Smith, his views favored a free market and influenced the Austrian school. Topic: <inaudible> Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> Bastiat was born on the 29th of June 1801 in Bayonne, Aquitaine, a port town in the south of France on the Bay of Biscay. His father, Pierre Bastiat, was a prominent businessman in the town. His mother died in 1808 when Frederick was seven years old. His father moved inland to the town of Mugrin, with Frederick following soon afterward. The Bastiat estate in Mugrin had been acquired during the French Revolution and had previously belonged to the Marquis of Poyan. Pierre Bastiat died in 1810, leaving Frederick an orphan. He was fostered by his paternal grandfather and his maiden aunt, Justine Bastiat. He attended a school in Bayonne, but his aunt thought poorly of it and so enrolled him in the school St. Sever. At age 17, he left school at Soros to work for his uncle in his family's export business. It was the same firm where his father had been a partner. Bastiat began to develop an intellectual interest as he no longer wished to work with his uncle and desired to go to Paris for formal studies. This hope never came true as his grandfather was in poor health and wished to go to the Mugrin estate. Bastiat accompanied him and cared for him. The next year when Bastiat was 24, his grandfather died, leaving him the family estate, thereby providing him with the means to further his theoretical inquiries. Bastiat developed intellectual interests in several areas including philosophy, history, politics, religion, travel, poetry, political economy and biography. After the middle class revolution of 1830, Bastiat became politically active and was elected Justice of the Peace of Mugrin in 1831 and to the Council General County Level Assembly of Lands in 1832. Bastiat was elected to the National Legislative Assembly soon after the French Revolution of 1848. His public career as an economist began only in 1844, when his first article was published in the journal Des Economistes during October of that year and it was ended by his untimely death in 1850. Bastiat contracted tuberculosis, probably during his tours throughout France to promote his ideas and that illness eventually prevented him from making further speeches particularly at the Legislative Assembly to which he was elected in 1848 and 1849 and ended his life. During the autumn of 1850, he was sent to Italy by his doctors and he first travelled to Pisa, then to Rome. On 24 December 1850, Bastiat called those with him to approach his bed and he murmured twice the words the truth before he died topic <laughs> works bastiat was the author of many works on economics and political economy generally characterized by their clear organization forceful argumentation and acerbic wit economist murray rothbard wrote that Bastiat was indeed a lucid and superb writer, whose brilliant and witty essays and fables to this day are remarkable and devastating demolitions of protectionism and of all forms of government subsidy and control. He was a truly scintillating advocate of an unrestricted free market. However, Bastiat himself declared that subsidy should be available, but limited. Under extraordinary circumstances, for urgent cases, the state should set aside some resources to assist certain unfortunate people, to help them adjust to changing conditions." Among his better-known works is Economic Sophisms, a series of essays originally published in the journal Des Economistes which contain a defense of free trade and many strongly worded attacks on status policies. Bastiat wrote the work while living in England to advise the shapers of the French Republic on perils to avoid. Economic Sophisms was translated and adapted for an American readership in 1867 by the economist and historian of money Alexander Del Mar, writing under the pseudonym Emile Walter. Topic: <laughs> Economic Sophisms and the Candlemakers Petition. 
Contained within economic sophisms is the satirical parable known as the Candlemaker's Petition in which candlemakers and tallow producers lobby the Chamber of Deputies of the French July Monarchy to block out the sun to prevent its unfair competition with their products. Also included in the sophisms is a facetious petition to the king asking for a law forbidding the usage of everyone's right hand, based on a presumption by some of his contemporaries that more difficulty means more work and more work means more wealth. Topic: The Law 1850. Bastiat's most famous work is The Law, originally published as a pamphlet in 1850. It defines a just system of laws and then demonstrates how such law facilitates a free society. In The Law, he wrote that everyone has a right to protect his person, his liberty, and his property. The state should be only a substitution of a common force for individual forces. To defend this right, justice, defense of one's life, liberty and property has precise limits, but if government power extends further into philanthropic endeavors, then government becomes so limitless that it can grow endlessly. The resulting statism is, based on this triple hypothesis, the total inertness of mankind, the omnipotence of the law, and the infallibility of the legislator. The public then becomes socially engineered by the legislator and must bend to the legislator's will like the clay to the potter. Socialism, like the ancient ideas from which it springs, confuses the distinction between government and society. As a result of this, every time we object to a thing being done by government, the socialists conclude that we object to its being done at all. We disapprove of state education. Then the socialists say that we are opposed to any education. We object to a state religion. Then the socialists say that we want no religion at all. We object to a state-enforced equality. Then they say that we are against equality. And so on, and so on. It is as if the socialists were to accuse us of not wanting persons to eat because we do not want the state to raise grain. I do not dispute their right to invent social combinations, to advertise them, to advocate them, and to try them upon themselves, at their own expense and risk. But I do dispute their right to impose these plans upon us by law, by force, and to compel us to pay for them with our taxes. Bastiat posits that the law becomes perverted when it punishes one's right to self-defense of his life, liberty and property in favor of another's right to legalized plunder, which he defines as, if the law takes from some persons what belongs to them, and gives it to other persons to whom it does not belong. See if the law benefits one citizen at the expense of another by doing what the citizen himself cannot do without committing a crime, in which he includes the tax support of Protective tariffs, subsidies, guaranteed profits, guaranteed jobs, relief and welfare schemes, public education, progressive taxation, free credit, and public works. Bastiat was thus against redistribution. Topic: What is seen and what is unseen? In his 1850 essay, C. E. Con voit et C. E. Con ne voit pas. What is seen and what is unseen? Through the parable of the broken window, he introduced the concept of opportunity cost in all but name. This term was not coined until over 60 years after his death by Friedrich von Wieser in 1914. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Debate with Pierre Joseph Proudhon. He also famously engaged in a debate between 1849 and 1850 with Pierre Joseph Proudhon about the legitimacy of interest. As Robert LaRue argued, Bastiat had the conviction that Proudhon's anti interest doctrine was the complete antithesis of any serious approach. Proudhon famously lost his temper and declared to Bastiat, Your intelligence is asleep, or rather, it has never been awake. You are a man for whom logic does not exist. You do not hear anything, you do not understand anything. You are without philosophy, without science, without humanity. Your ability to reason, like your ability to pay attention and make comparisons is zero. Scientifically, Mr. Bastiat, you are a dead man. Views <laughs> <laughs> 
Bastiat asserted that the sole purpose of government is to protect the right of an individual to life, liberty and property and why it is dangerous and morally wrong for government to interfere with an individual's other personal matters. From this, Bastiat concluded that the law cannot defend life, liberty and property if it promotes legal or legalized plunder which he defined as using government force and laws to take something from one individual and give it to others as opposed to a transfer of property via mutually agreed contracts without using fraud nor violent threats against the other party, which Bastiat considered a legitimate transfer of property. In the law, Bastiat explains that if the privileged classes or socialists use the government for legalized plunder, this will encourage the other socio-economic class to also use legal plunder and that the correct response to both the socialists and the corporatists is to cease all legal plunder. Bastiat also explains in the law why his opinion is that the law cannot defend life, liberty and property if it promotes socialist policies. When used to obtain legalized plunder for any group, he says that the law is perverted against the only things life, liberty and property it is supposed to defend. Bastiat was also a strong supporter of free trade. He was inspired by and routinely corresponded with Richard Cobden and the English Anti-Corn Law League and worked with free trade associations in France. Because of his stress on the role of consumer demand in initiating economic progress a form of demand-side economics, Bastiat has been described by Mark Thornton, Thomas DiLorenzo and other economists as a forerunner of the Austrian school. In his Economic Harmonies, Bastiat states, we cannot doubt that self-interest is the mainspring of human nature. It must be clearly understood that this word is used here to designate a universal, incontestable fact, resulting from the nature of man, and not an adverse judgment, as would be the word selfishness. Thornton posits that Bastiat through taking this position on the motivations of human action demonstrates a pronounced Austrian flavor. One of Bastiat's most important contributions to economics was his admonition to the effect that good economic decisions can be made only by taking into account the full picture. That is, economic truths should be arrived at by observing not only the immediate consequences, that is, benefits or liabilities, of an economic decision, but also by examining the long-term second and third consequences. Additionally, one must examine the decision's effect not only on a single group of people say candlemakers or a single industry say candlemaking, but on all people and all industries in the society as a whole. As Bastiat famously put it, an economist must take into account both what is seen and what is not seen. Bastiat's rule was later expounded and developed by Henry Hazlitt in his work Economics in One Lesson, in which Hazlitt borrowed Bastiat's trenchant, broken window fallacy, and went on to demonstrate how it applies to a wide variety of economic falsehoods. Topic. Negative railroad A famous section of economic sophisms concerns the way that tariffs are inherently counterproductive. Bastiat posits a theoretical railway between Spain and France that is built in order to reduce the costs of trade between the two countries. This is achieved by making goods move to and from the two nations faster and more easily. Bastiat demonstrates that this situation benefits both countries' consumers because it reduces the cost of shipping goods and therefore reduces the price at market for those goods. However, each country's producers begin to criticize their governments because the other country's producers can now provide certain goods to the domestic market at reduced price. Domestic producers of these goods are afraid of being outcompeted by the newly viable industry from the other country, therefore these domestic producers demand that tariffs be enacted to artificially raise the cost of the foreign goods back to their pre-railroad levels so that they can continue to compete. Bastiat makes two significant statements here. Even if the producers in a society are benefited by these tariffs which they are not, according to Bastiat, the consumers in that society are clearly hurt by the tariffs as they are now unable to secure the goods they want at the low price at which they should be able to secure them. The tariffs completely negate any gains made by the railroad and therefore make it essentially pointless. To further demonstrate his statements, Bastiat suggests, in a classic reductio ad absurdum, that rather than enacting tariffs, the government should simply destroy the railroad anywhere that foreign goods can outcompete local goods. Since this would be just about everywhere, he goes on to suggest that this government should simply build a broken or negative railroad right from the start and not waste time with tariffs and rail building. Topic. 
Bastiat's tomb Bastiat died in Rome and is buried at San Luigi dei Franceschi in the center of that city. He declared on his deathbed that his friend Gustav de Molinari publisher of Bastiat's 1850 book The Law was his spiritual heir. <laughs> Books Bastiat, Frederick Propriété et loi, justice et fraternité in French. Paris, Guillaumine et C. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Bastiat, Frederic Le Tot, Maudit Argent in French. Paris, Guillaumine et C. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Bastiat, Frederic Incomptabilités parlementaires in French. Paris, Guillaumine et C. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Bastiat, Frederic Pay et liberté au la budget républicaine in French. Paris, Guillaumine et C. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Bastiat, Frederic 1849. Protectionism et communisme in French. Paris, Guillaumine et C. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Bastiat, Frederic 1983. Herves économiques. Libre échange in French. Textes présentés par Florin Aftalian. Paris, Puf. ISBN 2-13-037861-7. Bastiat, Frédéric Sophisms économiques. Bibliothèque classique de la liberté in French. Préface de Michel Leder. Paris, Les Belles Lettres. ISBN 978-2-251-39038-3. Bastiat, Frédéric Pamphlets. Bibliothèque classique de la liberté in French. Préface de Michel Leder. Paris, Les Belles Lettres. ISBN 978-2-251-39049-9. See also Anne-Robert Jacques Turgot, Baron de Laun Bastiat Prize Harmonies of Political Economy Hippolyte Castile List of liberal theorists Physiocrats Sophism Topic. References Bastiat's Legacy in Economics by Georg Guido Hulsman Frederick Bastiat's Views on the Nature of Money by Mark Thornton Frederick Bastiat, 200 Years on by Joseph R. Stromberg Political Economy and Liberalism in France, The Contributions of Frederick Bastiat, London and New York, Routledge, 2011 by Robert LaRue Topic. Further reading Boyack, Connor, Stanfield, Elijah Illustrator 2014. The Tuttle Twins Learn About the Law. Libertas Press. ISBN 978-0989291224. A version of the law written for young children. 55 pp. In English Fauvel, A. de Bastiat. In Nouveau Dictionnaire de l'économie politique, Dereme Edition, Tome Premier, A. H., Publié sous la direction de M. Léon C. et de M. Joseph Shaley, 170-72, Paris, Guillaumine et C., 1900. In French, Guerrello, Jacques, the 16th of February 2011. Portrait, Bastiat, 1801-1850. La Nouvelle Lettre, in French, 1067, 8. Retrieved the 12th of May 2012. Hulsman, Guido, 2008. Bastiat, Frederick. In Hamowy, Ronald. The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, CA, Sage, Cato Institute pp. 25-27. doi.10.4135.9781400.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0
London, Routledge. Roche, George Charles III 1971. Frederick Bastiat, A Man Alone. Architects of Freedom Series. New Rochelle, Arlington House. Retrieved 12 May 2012. Russell, Dean 1969. Frederick Bastiat, Ideas and Influence. Irvington on Hudson, Foundation for Economic Education. Unliberal, Frederick Bastiat in French. Toulouse, Presses de l'Institut d'Etudes Politiques de Toulouse, 1988. Topic. External links Works by Frederick Bastiat at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Frederick Bastiat at Internet Archive Works by Frederick Bastiat at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Frederick Bastiat at Encyclopædia Britannica Bastiat. Org publishes and indexes information about Bastiat Circle Frederick Bastiat publishes and indexes information about Bastiat The Bastiat Society Frederick Bastiat, Libertarian Challenger or Political Bargainer? Article by economist Brian Bogus on the development of Bastiat's thinking Biography by Gustave de Molinari in French the Bastiat Collection Vol. 1, The Bastiat Collection Vol. 2A Collection of Bastiat Works published by the Ludwig von Mises Institute Audio version of Russell's translation of The Law The Law, Frederick Bastiat PDF English. Frederick Bastiat at Find a Grave